right, this is anatomy physiology lesson 10.03 over neuroglial cells. So in our last uh, video lesson, we talked about the anatomy of a neuron. <clears throat> and um, the neuron, uh, hopefully I don't, uh, it's been a while, but I think we talked about the fact that that neuron that we were looking at was in the peripheral nervous system. So in the first video, we talked about the difference between the peripheral nervous system and the central nervous system. And uh, we're not just talking about any neuroglial cells. We're talking about neuroglial cells in the CNS, which stands for central nervous system. So we're talking about cells that are in the central nervous system. <clears throat> uh, we're going to contrast that to neuroglial cells that we find in the peripheral nervous system in the next slide. Well, before we go too far down this path, let's talk about what is a glial cell. A lot of times, instead of saying neuroglial, uh, we'll just say glial. So a glial cell, glial cell is in a sense a nervous a neuron helper cell. It does something that assists the neuron. <clears throat> and uh, the example we had in the last video we're going to see is a Schwann cell that helps myelinate. So we have four kinds of glial cells in the central nervous system. Uh, number, let's see, what order do we wanna talk about these in? Let's go number one, number two, number three, and we'll save uh, this guy for number four. So those are our four glial cells. Each one has its own name. Each one has its own job. It's kind of like in a factory, uh, you have your production workers and that would be the neurons. They're getting all the work done. But you also have uh, janitors that clean up at the end of the night. You have a um, uh, communications department that helps send out memos. That's what these guys are like. Uh, you have uh, your quality control and your health and safety guys, and that's what these are like. So they all have jobs that support these neurons. And, and here we have uh, the label of neurons. And so this is a neuron, this is a neuron, and this is a neuron. In my diagram, they're orange. You can see here's the nucleus. All right, so let's start off with neuroglial cell number one, which is called an astrocyte. astrocyte. Uh, I guess it comes uh, from the, its shape looks a little bit like a uh, um, star, astro star, <clears throat> a little bit like a starfish, right? Um, and it has two jobs. Now let's, let's look at where it's at in relation to uh, different structures here. So over here, I have the term capillary and I have a capillary and if you can see here, and I'm going to do the astrocyte and I'm going to make this all red. So I'm going to line this in red. So these are red blood cells and this is a capillary. And then over here I have a neuron. You can see that the astrocyte has uh, almost like you want to call them tentacles that come and wrap around the neuron and they come over here to the capillary. So the first function that uh, this has is function number one is support. It helps provide support and connection for the neurons. So you can say it kind of provides a, a framework or a scaffold. You know what scaffolds are. It's uh, little things they put up the side of the building to help workers get around uh, for the neurons. The second function has to do with the fact that it's got this connection to this capillary. Uh, astrocytes form what is known as the blood brain barrier. And it's actually a physical block. So it's a physical block between the central nervous system or CNS, between the CNS neurons and the blood supply. 
well, why would we want this? Don't we need to get things from the blood to the neurons? We do, but the brain is a very unique organ. And so there are some things that can cross the blood brain barrier like oxygen, like carbon dioxide, but a lot of uh, substances uh, can't get across. So most drugs, most pharmaceuticals cannot go directly to our brain. And this can be good uh, in the case of a drug that would be harmful, you wouldn't want to overdose, you wouldn't want it to affect your brain. But in other ways, it can be bad. So for example, uh, with uh, Parkinson's and um, uh, some of the other uh, diseases that affect uh, Alzheimer's, that affect the brain, they can't deliver drugs directly to the affected tissue because they can't get the drugs across the blood-brain barrier. One of the uh, treatments that I read about last year was they took a, a sound, a focused sound waves and they used it, uh, directed it at the astrocytes and it caused the astro astro astrocytes to pull apart and create an opening through which they then delivered the medication. When they stopped the sound waves, then the astro when they stopped the sound waves, the astrocytes closed the gap and um, uh, it reformed the blood brain barrier. So uh, one of the drugs that can get directly through uh, the blood-brain barrier is ethanol. And if you uh, know anything about your chemistry, ethanol is alcohol. So alcohol can affect the brain directly. And if you drink too much and the alcohol goes not just at the top of the brain, which we call the cortex, but into the deeper parts of the brain, it actually puts your lower brain to sleep, which causes you to stop breathing. That's the problem with alcohol is you're not protected by your blood brain barrier. Uh, the second one is called a microglial cell. Microglial cell. These guys are the janitorial staff of the brain. So first of all, or of the central nervous system. So first of all, they're free roaming. They're not attached to anything. They can pretty much go wherever they want to go. Um, so in this case, you see one of them is attached to a neuron and one of them is attached to an atrium. Whoops, I spelled roaming wrong, R-O-A-M. How about that? Uh, their job, their function is to find and destroy invaders and or to remove waste. So they have an immune function. If something does happen to get through that blood brain barrier or you have a virus that's so small it can slip right past, uh, these microglial cells will uh, find and destroy uh, anything in the brain that doesn't belong there. All right, number three, uh, these are called ependymal cells, E-P-E-N-D-Y-M-A-L cells. And if you remember anything from chapter two, if you look at the shape of these, this shape should seem fairly familiar. Looking at the shape of these, and here at the end, I don't know if you can see, we've got structures here. So what, what does this look like to you? Hopefully you said epithelial tissue. So ep uh, ependymal cells are epithelial in nature, which means they're lining something. So what is it that they're lining? We have cavities inside the brain called ventricles. So we're looking at, this is going to be the apical surface. This is gonna be the basement membrane. So here, uh, this is facing a cavity called a ventricle. And ventricles are filled with something called cerebral spinal fluid. So ventricles are filled with, I'm going to put CSF, and that stands for cerebro spinal fluid. And this fluid uh, has the purpose of it carries nutrients throughout the brain. Um, it uh, carries waste away. It helps regulate uh, temperature regulation. But uh, these ventricles are kind of stagnant pockets. And so how do you get fluid motion in, in our arteries and our capillaries, the heart pumps and that moves the blood. So how are we circulating this cerebrospinal fluid? Well, these ependymal cells have structures here, which hopefully you recognize as cilia. 
So their function is to use their cilia to circulate, use their cilia to circulate the CSF. All right, that takes us to neuroglial cell number four. Now, let's talk about where this is at and uh, we'll look at a few of these. So I have a neuron here and I have two neurons here. Let's start back here. So you'll see I have a neuron and we talked about the fact this is the cell body, these are dendrites and this is the axon, this is the axons. We've got these axons coming out. And it's a little bit faint on the video, but you've got a dot and you've got these branching structures. Here you have a dot. You have branching structures, dot branching structures. Each one of those dots represents one of these glial cells that are called oligodendrocytes. Oligodendrocytes. So here for number four, I have a better view. I have my cell body, and then I have structures coming out. And this is structure number one. Well, let's go letter A, letter B, letter C. And let's look at C because it's the largest. Kind of outline that. And you'll notice I have this <coughs> uh, spherical structure. So this should look familiar to you. Hopefully uh, you recognize that this looks like a Schwann cell. Well, it is. And in fact, this is myelin. So in the peripheral nervous system, Schwann cells put myelin on an axon. And here's an, let's put an A here for axon. We have it over here too. In the central nervous system, the oligodendrocytes myelinate the axons. It's a little bit different than the Schwann cells in the peripheral nervous system. So what we saw in the peripheral nervous system, and we'll look at this again in the next video, is that one Schwann cell could create one section of myelin. In this case, one oligodendrocyte, I'm going to abbreviate that, can create three to four sections of myelin. three to four sections of myelin. So in this case, this guy's creating one, two, three. This one's creating one, two, three, four. You can't see it, it's blocked there. Also notice that one oligodendrocyte can myelinate multiple axons. So each of these guys are, mul are myelinating on both of these axons. So the other difference that we have is that one oligodendrocyte can myelinate multiple axons. <clears throat> it is worth noting too, while there are a lot of myelinated neurons in the brain, not every neuron in the brain is myelinated. So if you're myelinated, myelin is fat and fat is white. So the area of the brain that's myelinated looks white and we call that white matter. So if we're non-myelinated, if we're non-myelinated, there is no fat and it looks gray. And so we call uh, that part of the brain gray matter. And when we get into brain dissection, you'll be able to see that there are areas that look white and areas that look gray. And that's because there's some areas that are myelinated and there's some that aren't. But anything in, and remember, let's tie this back to the central nervous system. Anything in the central nervous system that's myelinated is myelinated by an oligodendrocyte or an oligodendrocyte. All right, so what are our takeaways today? We talked about glial cells in the central nervous system. Uh, we have the astrocyte, which helps hold up the neurons and support them. 
It also creates that blood brain barrier that helps protect the brain. We have these microglial cells, they're free to move about and they work for invaders. They're immune cell. Um, and then we have these appendable cells that have cilia. They beat the cilia, they circulate the cerebral spinal fluid and the ventricles. And finally, we have the oligodendrocytes, which have the function of myelinating the axons. They're a little bit different from the peripheral nervous system, uh, which we'll contrast that with in the next video. All right, that's it for 1003.